what I would call strategy. Kind of. Ooh. Uh, Did I just lie? Do I just completely disagree with what I'm saying there? Either way, I'll kind of explain what I mean. So a strategy is what's going on from, from start to finish. It's all about how things link together. Dropping a tank on your opponent's high ground is not a strategy. That's like a tactic. That's something that you can just sort of incorporate. But it's not a strategy. Doing something like rushing for Viking to harass him, and because you rushed for Viking, you have a factory and a starport available so you can get a tank and then get um, a, a medevac to do the drop, and you have the Viking to protect that high ground. And after this, you can uh, you have enough money to get an expansion up, and because you also have the factory finished, you can build tanks to defend your expansion. Now we're talking about a strategy, all these things linking together over time. Because, um, I mean, it, never in chess is it like, oh my god, look, here's a cool fork. My strategy is to fork people. Like, that. it's not, it doesn't quite make sense. So, what I love about Braddock is that it has this flair of tactics throughout. But what's the strategy that we're seeing here in terms of transitioning with unit compositions? It starts off with a very fast starport and a small barracks count. Two barracks, one starport that was kind of fast. So it's going to be a pretty big number of medevacs compared to the army size. And this is what allowed Braddock to do this early push. But then Braddock is really not going to do much at all with the starports. And instead he's going to go way crazy with the barracks. He's going to have a lot of barracks in the mid game. That's what he's transitioning to. But then in the late game, he's going to transition not to yet more barracks, but instead to a ton of medevacs. So in other words, it's a few barracks and a fast medevac, a ton of barracks and still one starport with medevacs, and then two starports and the same number of barracks. Cool transitioning to see, um, because over time we're seeing that he's basically saying, okay, well, as the game gets really late, I just want to have a huge army that's hard to kill. And that's what the medevacs are going to be um, contributing to. So that is just very, very clever transitioning by Braddock. Very, very appreciative of everything Braddock is doing in this game. I really like this a lot. And of course, the the money scan. Uh-oh. Oh, we have some investors in here. And it's times like these when you think, why didn't I get queens? Maybe that would have been a good late game choice there. But, you know, oh, oh, medevacs. Oh, God. And of course, now Braddock has to engage. And despite the fact that Braddock has amazing micro, it's hard to micro when you are not allowed to move. And the Mutilus clean everything up. Mutilus, Zergling, Baneling, very strong. And of course, Braddock, trademark aggression, freezing my computer as he drops at this bottom expansion. No, he attacks at this top part while he drops at the bottom main. Really like that play. And man, just slamming out those medevacs. How many does he have now? Wow, he's, he has six already. He's lost so many medevacs this game. But of course, never give up, never surrender. More medevacs coming, more drops in the works. Rarely do you see a player abuse drops as much as we're seeing Braddock do right now. It's so easy to fall into that, you know, pattern of, well, medevacs heal, so may as well just let him heal. But, you know, Braddock really stepping it up. Huge movement right here with these Mutilists getting in here. Yet another reason uh, why Mutilists are so strong. And Braddock just being relentless with these drops, just trying to get everywhere. Sadly, Zerglings are a little bit too fast on creep. And you know, Braddock has really been in an uphill battle all game long. But he's still finding money to get these expansions up. He still has a pretty decent economy. Uh, looks like Mind has more money than he even knows what to do with, because he's been maxed for quite some time. But still insane macro from Braddock. And so cool to see his use of Medivacs when comparing it to his old Terran vs. Protoss. Seeing this big emphasis on aggression, a lot more Marauders than when he played against Protoss. Still some cool stuff. Still some quite, quite, quite cool, cool, cool stuff, stuff, stuff. Apparently had to say it, couldn't avoid it. 
and mind getting the Ultralisk Cavern up. Very, very good, smooth, smooth transition. I was giving Ultralisk a lot of crap in some of my earlier casts, but this is really the best way to go about getting Ultralisk. Getting the double plus plus ups for the Ultralisks and relying on Zerglings and Banelings is just sort of the main brunt of your force. And you use these Mutalisks to force your opponent to get all these Marines. And then as you're transitioning up to Hive, you can easily get these Ultralisks and they will be 3-3 three, three by the time they even give birth into the game. So Braddock trying now to harass, or excuse me, trying not to expand. And this is the point in time where you can always sort of tell when a pro, or when a Terran is starting to fall behind, when it looks visually like he's run out of steam, he's playing pretty defensively, we're not seeing all these drops, we're not seeing any of this huge forward movement with these pushes. And often it can be a little bit difficult to identify exactly when this happened, exactly when the Terran player sort of fell back. But I would absolutely say that it was, uh, you know, around the time the Mutalist popped in here and there weren't quite enough missile turrets. Plenty here around the main and the expansion, but not enough around the unit producing structures, which again, one of those key points. And of course, once you have this many Mutalisks, it's really easy to manage drops. Braddock trying to sit in between these bases. He is 3-3. Again, phenomenal upgrader. Braddock is. He is so good at upgrading in this matchup. And hey, there's some ghosts. Yes, indeed. Going to be doing a little bit of EMP action. If he had any bases left, the EMP to defend. So how sad. And he's poking up here. And here comes the huge EMPs. And oh my god, look at how fast those ultralists fall. Oh my god. And in case you guys didn't know, sniping Mutalist is just amazing. That is one of the most rewarding things in the entire game. And Braddox is the good game. Um, now, unfortunately, I was going to do a little bit longer of a daily, but apparently the technical troubles were a little bit too much um, for today. So as a result, you know, there's about 10 minutes that was cut out of this. So sadly, I must skip the other game where Braddock won. Um, but it's cool to see the strength of a player when he ends up losing because you should never ever 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 underestimate the strength of the losing player it's so easy to do you know like the canonical example of this is bisu versus savior way back when savior wasn't a cheating piece of shit right you know way back when savior actually played starcraft for the glory um savior got 3-0'd by Bisu. Bisu just pulled this amazing Corsair play. It was the first time anyone had ever seen it. And people went, oh, oh, Savior has been solved. Bisu cracked the Savior case. And Savior is forever done. And that makes for good headlines in a newspaper. But if you're a player who wants to sit down and learn and improve, you should look at Savior's play and go, Jesus, I have never seen a Zerg player be so bold with expanding as in that series. What lesson can I learn from that? And, um, oh, yeah, those are just, oh, yeah, do a little bit of net cracking. Hope you heard that. Hope the mic picked that up. Just so you guys know that occasionally when I'm feeling a little bit tense, I just snap my neck in half. But, um, you know, when you rewatch those games of Savior against Bisu, you get to see, wow, yeah, huh, he really is expanding a lot. And can I, can you actually get away with defending that? As it turns out, if you make a few adjustments to account for this Bisu style of play, yes, you can actually defend it pretty damn well and it's it feels you feel really mighty you know because you have these thin defense you have like four drones mining it's six different expansions um and but you still have this huge income because you just have so many free mineral patches and you have all this potential income that you could get and you just have to defend defend and it becomes cool and clear what your goals are but no one did that after savior versus bisu everyone just went bisu bisu and created threads about the bisu build um and as we can see from braddock braddock in the end, he lost this game. And Mind, an incredibly impressive player, you know, impresses the hell out of me, moreover, because he's apparently good at Protoss versus Zerg, as well as Zerg versus Terran, so who knew? But, um, in this game, Braddock, again, he fell behind when he didn't have those turrets in his main, and he lost probably 25 or 30 food that he didn't need to. But regardless, aside from that, Braddock had this sweet early push. He was all over the place. He was doing huge pushes into the main. He had these nice transitions. Even after he lost his top expansion, he was still in it and really getting in his opponent's face. And when you see that, you go, wow. If I wanted to do what Braddock did, I know I need to make these few adjustments with the turrets, but 
wow, if I just mimic that insane aggression with the Marine Marauder combos, I can be like Braddock too. And then you start exploring and playing around with it, and, you know, if you're lucky, you get the chance to play Braddock. You're like, yeah! And then he smashes you with the Terran Berserk style he has. And you're like, ooh, it does really feel good. And, um, again, just never, ever, ever underestimate the, the strength of the losing player, because what we saw Braddock do in this game that he lost was so impressive it was so cool and so nostalgic you got that brood war feeling where oh i remember the days when you had 10 attacks going around all over the map and it was actually hard to keep track of and that's cool that's cool to to see that sort of stuff so let us let us take some questions um as i get more uh liquid mm -hmm. oh you know here's a great question by tipaki Dear the Thought Hammer, <laughs> the Thought Hammer has spoken. Uh, let's see, would unupgraded Thors be a legit option?